Um, the cost analysis workspace, a different workspace. Um, again, looking at um, focusing me more on my inventory KPIs that again, I establish my turns, my accuracy, um, and then breaking down an inventory value um, into a pie chart. So same screen, different way of looking at it. When I start drilling into those KPIs, I can start going down by item. So we were looking at the KPIs across the system. Now I can actually drill into an item and I can look at the, the movement of that item over a period. Um, I can see it graphically. I can see the uh, cost split and the movement split over time. And then I get the actual um, KPIs for that specific item. So these are quick drill downs, a quick way of looking at my items, looking at my inventory, um, looking at my costing splits and uh, what I'm buying, what I'm making. <clears throat> In this case, I don't buy any of this. The procured is all zero. I make all of it. Um, but these are, if you're into an outsourcing model where you may be manufacturing some and buying some, this gives you a real nice graphic and real nice check on you know how is that how is that working for you? I set up things called cost groups, and I can have a zillion million of them. Here's this cost group type that I said I really hate the way they label these, but you know labor material overhead. I like fixed. I like variable. Um, some people put surcharges, rebates, freight. Uh, you can have a zillion million of these cost groups. And uh, the screen becomes uh, quite the challenge as you start digging into um, different cost groups for an item. This is just one item. And then I'm gonna be comparing um, one item in one cost version to another one. So, um, this could be current cost, and this could be next season's cost, something like that. So on this screen, I can drill down hundreds and hundreds of these lines, and I can go and see, okay, you know, where are my big differences? Um, we added in, in April this year, they added in this graphic that allows me to chunk it into those cost group types. So you can see how important the naming of those is. So if I look at this, my direct manufacturing between, let's call this my current cost and next year's cost, that hasn't changed much. My uh, indirect, you know, it's gone down a little bit, but here's the big difference. It's $100 per item difference. And uh, so now I know where the big cost changes in that item are coming from. And so now I can go and drill into these direct materials, these M1, M2, M3s, and go and have a look at, you know, how did, how did we manage to lob off almost, you know, just over a third of the cost of an item. Um, so, these sorts of tools, these little bits of uh, graphic are coming into the system more and more. There's some more of them scheduled for October um, to really try and get us out of spreadsheets with you know 20,000 lines on them. You can dump this out to a spreadsheet, be my guest, analyze the heck out of it, change a whole lot of stuff, import it back in. If that's your jam, have at it. But I really like that. Um, the FNO system is now really trying to help us do our job as opposed to just dumping data on us. So once I know where to focus, like right now, I know exactly where to focus. My direct materials is my point of interest. Um, it's a lot easier for me to take um, a, uh, an item that may have you know thousands of cost elements on it and just focus in on a few of them but those are the ones that are giving me the biggest delta or the biggest variance so allowing me to spend my time 
in the places where I'm going to make the most difference or effect the most change. Mm 